Welcome to example number eight. This is a question where we're given nine particles with different speeds from five meters per second all the way up to 12 meters per second and we're asked to find a number of statistical things. Uh, first we're asked to find what is the average speed or sometimes just simply called the arithmetic mean. So in part A we're simply going to add up all the velocities and divide by the total number of particles as you would do any arithmetic mean. So there you have it. And now when you put that all into your calculator, you get the following, a speed of 12.7 meters per second. Now let's move on to part B to find the root mean squared, sometimes called in mathematics the quadratic mean. To find this st statistical measure, you need to take the square root of the mean, which means we're dividing by 9 in this case, of all the squares of the speeds of the gas molecules. So you're going to take 5 squared plus 8 squared plus 12 squared and all the way up to 20 squared and then divide by 9 molecules because that's what we're given. And that will give you an answer of 13.3 meters per second. And part C is asking you to find the most probable speed. If you look at your list, you can see that there are three of them at 12 meters per second, two of them at 14 meters per second, and the remaining have different speeds. So the most probable speed is 12 meters per second. This is what you call in statistics the mode. So this is the mean, this is the RMS speed, and this is the mode. You'll notice that the RMS speed is the greatest speed of all three of them. Then followed by that is the mean, which is followed right in between here, and the most probable speed is right at the very peak of this curve. To help visualize uh, these different speeds of average and RMS and most probable speed, we have shown here on the right a distribution curve. This curve is sometimes called the Maxwell distribution curve. It was in 1852 that this Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell first solved the problem of finding the speed distribution of gas molecules. And hence, he came up with the result known as the Maxwell Speed Distribution Law. You do not need to know the mathematical curve that fits this curve, but you should understand uh, the conceptual background of this. So, for example, you could see at the very peak of this curve, that is the most probable speed because that's the mode of your distribution. Over here to the right, you'll notice the RMS velocity is 13.3 meters per second, obviously greater than that most probable speed. And then in between here, right at this spot here, somewhere between 13.3 and 12, at 12.7 is our average speed. So you can see sort of they're not obviously in the same location along this curve. So therefore the RMS speed is greater than the mean speed, which is greater than the most probable speed. If you look at your next page in the notes, you'll see some important points that you should know about the distribution curve for different gases. You can see over here we have a gas that's at 300 Kelvin, and then another gas here in red that is at uh, 1200 Kelvin. And so there's some important properties that you should note. First, you should note that the peak here has shifted to the right for greater temperature. So as the temperature increases, the average speed increases as we expected because the temperature is directly proportional to the RMS speed squared. You can see that I've gone from 300 Kelvin to 1200 Kelvin, so that's a, a change in temperature of four times, but my RMS speed, the peak here, and the peak here most probable, which is close to where the RMS velocity has only doubled because of this relationship here. And you can note that there is an asymmetric shape in here, and as you get over here to the higher velocities, it doesn't it basically reaches out to infinity. So at the lowest possible speed would be a zero, but as you go to further to the right, this really extends out to infinity. And you'll really actually the the fastest speed that it can be is really the speed of light. So it's not technically infinity, but it's really going up to the speed of light. One other thing that you should note is that the area under the curve, for example, at 1200 Kelvin here, is the same as the area under the curve here. Uh, 
And that's because this really just represents the total number of molecules. So really what happens is it shifts to the right at higher temperatures, but it broadens the amount of speeds now that you can attain. But these two areas are the same. This distribution curve is not only valid for gases, but it also applies to liquids. So for example, imagine you have a pond of water during the summertime. Uh, the temperature of the water molecules can be represented by a similar Maxwell distribution curve shown here. Most of the water molecules don't have enough energy, kinetic energy, to, to escape the water. And uh, it's really only the very fast ones that are right at the tail end over here that have enough kinetic energy to escape. And when they escape, they take away their kinetic energy from the pond and they cause the water as a whole to cool. So hence evaporation is a cooling process. Maybe you've had the experience of having some kind of uh, alcohol soaked cloth put on your forehead if you had a fever and you felt when that water started to evaporate or the alcohol started to evaporate, it actually called, uh, caused a cool uh, comfort to your head. All right, that's enough of the discussion of the Maxwell distribution curve and this last example in chapter 8. We're done.